What's going on guys and gals? Chris Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my office today. I'm gonna to show you five used items that you can sell on eBay for good profit. So here we are, beginning of a week on Monday. If you're lucky to catch this live, a lot of times I go midday, you know, come say what's up and let me know if everything sounds okay. But I'm gonna show you five used items that you can sell on eBay for good profit. And these items are items that I typically find at thrift stores, garage sales, things like that. So um, on the stuff that I'm gonna show you today, I don't believe any of these were actually found at pawn, uh, pawn shops or anything like that. So Anyways, um, they were found between, I think, Friday. I think one was found last week. Um, one of them already sold. So that's pretty cool. We're going to be looking at these five items, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So if I sound good, that's great. A little bit shorter of a show today. So I'm going to lead off with the very first find. I was going to garage sales on Friday. And for you guys out there that are maybe not going to Friday garage sales, now is right about the time to you know, start taking a look at those things because we're still kind of in spring cleaning mode. And uh, a Friday garage sale can be great because it's way less competition. Typically, people that do, let's say, garage selling for a hobby, try to make some extra money on eBay, but they have a normal professional job, they can't break out of work. You know, So Friday garage sales, I find, are a lot less competitive and um, still really fun and as long as you don't live in a, some crazy rural area you know friday garage sale could be something uh, or looking for friday garage sales could be something that you should be putting into your arsenal so i want to show you something today that i found last friday it was pretty neat um the price was super fair so i didn't um really decide to talk it down so much um but i think after all said was done, all said, all was said and done, uh, I bought this for, it had a $5 price tag on it, um, but I bought this thing for $3. Now you might be thinking, great tennis racket, who cares? But tennis rackets are good things to have, um, you know, to sell, resell on eBay, but certain ones only. So I like to find tennis rackets that are a little bit more fatter, bigger, you know, maybe carbon or graphite composition. Um, I definitely scan them heavily for warping and um, carbon splinters around the top right here. Here. But uh, this is a great brand right here. We got Babala, right? Or some people call it Babalot, but I think it's called Babala. But uh, anyways, we have a good, you know, racket right here, four and three eighths, which is the grip size, which typically the grip size will be down here, or it's going to be somewhere in this inner triangle. Um, you definitely want to find one of the easiest things to do, because I don't just buy a racket because I, you know, I see it and I know all about it because that's a little bit more on the rare case. Typically when I, f I find a racket, um, I'm looking for the racket to be as fat as possible on these, uh, you know, on the frame because typically um, fatter frames will be made of things like carbon or graphite um, and other materials. So, um, and I like to, you know, kind of wave it back and forth and see how light it is because you can kind of tell some of those old 90s rackets, early 2000s rackets, you just go like this, they're much heavier, you know. So um, I've, I've been known to hustle hyper hammers, you know, all kinds of different ones. But this is an interesting brand that, uh, you know, sometimes you find every now and then it's a bubble lot. So um, I look for these, I look for bubble lot bags that, you know, are ones that are a little bit more insulation based uh, that can hold maybe six rackets or something like that. That's a good thing to sell on eBay as well. But this racket right here for three bucks, um, considerably will sell on eBay for around 70 plus right here. Now, when you're looking at rackets, it's important to take a look for the specs, which are usually in the inner triangle right here. It'll tell you what the head size is. And if the, if the head size is not there, it might be right around here in tiny little letters. But typically the model of the racket's gonna be right around this area right here or on the inside part of the edge right here. So we have a pure drive. I think that's what this one is called. Um, pure drive 107 or something like that. Nice racket, uh, comes with the case as well. Not that that's really a huge deal or anything, but you know, definitely something that's a plus, if, especially if it's the actual one that came with the racket in the first place. So you can definitely sell these things locally as well. So that's definitely something to be considered is that you don't necessarily have to put those things on eBay, but they do sell on eBay real well. Now, when it comes down to shipping those things, a lot of times just two really big padded poly bags or not even padded because the racket is very, very strong. So if you just put it with two poly bags, you merge them together, then you tape the middle. That's all it really needs. I've also done the other way, which is where you flatten the box and it gets a little bit more annoying and a little bit more odd shaped, um, but it pr protects it a little bit more. But for a racket like this that already has the bag with it, because typically I'll go the box route if there's no bag or no uh, case with the racket, but this one has the case, so I'm probably gonna put two poly bags around it, tape the middle, and I'll be done with it. So anyways, um, yeah, you know, that's, the funny thing is someone's saying Roger, Roger Federer or Rafa Nadal and all those kind of people are really great. They're tennis greats. I, uh, I actually sold, uh, one of my one of my best bag sales uh, was a, a Roger. I think it was a Federer 
bag, really hard to find limited edition Federer bag, holds six rackets. Half of the bag was insulated, had tags on it, bought it at Goodwill for, I think, $29. It sold for like 260 or something like that. So there's money in the bags as well, but not all bags. You have to be very selective with it. So what's up, guys? I see a lot of people in the feed here. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Um, let's go to item number two. This item are actually already sold. So after I show it on the video, I'm going to be putting it in a box and uh, off it goes. Now, the interesting thing is this uh, thing sold in untested condition, which a lot of people on eBay don't mess with that, right? Now, it's not to be cons uh, confused with uh, four parts are not working because I don't know if it works or not, right? But it is untested, meaning I don't technically know. I, I know how to test it, but I don't know if I necessarily want to because I don't have the uh, the game or anything like that, but I know how to. It's also missing one cable, which I put in the description. Now, what are these things? These are basically flight control, pedal, uh, flight control sticks right here. And sometimes people buy these. This is like a throttle yoke, whatever kind of thing, you know, to fly a plane around. And um, sometimes if you want to get the full simulator kind of thing, they have the foot pedals as well. But this one's just the X52, not the Pro model, but the X52 flight control system. Uh, this was $4 out of Savers. And um, it's in really good condition. I mean, cosmetically, it's in impeccable condition. I wouldn't be surprised if it had zero issues whatsoever. But I don't know how to test this part out because I don't have that uh, uh, that cable right there, right? And plus, I don't have the game. So anyways, um, this right here sold for 60 bucks, untested condition. It was in used category, untested, all right? So untested, provide, um, you know, return details and all that kind of stuff. And I will even, you know, pick up the return shipping if I want to really, because uh, I might just tell the person to keep it, who knows, right? But I'll take the chance of this thing going out in untested status. I do sell untested, you know, here and there. And it's definitely something that you can uh, look into. Now, if you know something is broken for sure, that goes in four parts or not working. That's the category it goes for. Now, if this thing was tested and perfectly working and the cable was there, um, then we're talking a little bit more closer to like 90 bucks or something like that on the sales price. And I could even have put it to Amazon FBA for about 110, 120. So anyways, that's a really awesome thing that has to be boxed up right after the show. Thought I'd show it to you guys out there. Um, let's talk about the next item right quick or the next round of items. So I told you there's five items. There's technically six items on the show. Uh, these were found today. These are just Awesome road biking shoes. And the reason why I say they're awesome is because they have a carbon uh, carbon composite undersole, which is good for rigidity purposes, for uh, you know, light being lightweight, carbon is usually the best thing to find on the bottom of a road bike shoe. Um, but another good thing to find on the, bottom, on the top of a road bike shoe is the, the ratchet clasp as the last clasp. All right, so we have Velcro, Velcro. I really shouldn't be saying hook and loop, hook and loop. And uh, we have the ratchet type mechanism right there, similar to like maybe a snowboard boot or something like that. So you can ratchet it, see if it works, and then you press the little button right here and you can release the strap like that. You feed it in there like that. These are the best ones to find. And then you just test the ratchet like that. And it's good. So the ratchet thing is to get that ultimate fit right before you're about to step on your road bike. And uh, that's an EC70 uh, undersole. We have, basically it's Easton Carbon undersole. Um, these are Giro, I forgot what the name of the shoe is, but uh, this was $12, this was a $13 find today. Estimated resale value around 50 to 60 bucks. So definitely decided to get into those. Pretty awesome. Um, okay, so. Um, while we're on the same note as that, I got these last weekend for $7. These are in mint condition. These are Shimano with the ratchet top mountain biking shoes. So we saw the undersole of that last boot. Now we're going to look at something that's a little bit more, not entry level, but mid grade level because, um, you know, the undersole is, this is a really heavy boot, right? Typically mountain biking shoes, once they get much lighter, they command a premium, but this is probably Shimano's entry uh, model with a ratchet top strap right here. So we can see the ratchet strap right here. We have hook and loop fastener, hook and loop fastener, uh, impeccable condition. I found them at a garage sale. Check it out. The bottom of those are unbelievable. What's up, Zaheer Malik? Good to see you in the feed. And um, <clears throat> $7, and I believe these will probably sell between 50 and 55 bucks pretty quickly. Not a big deal. The funny thing is both these shoes are actually my size, but I have um, I have already my backup mountain biking shoe ready to go. And that's one of the best things about being a reseller is that you can also save money because you're not buying some of the things that you normally would have spent uh, you know, full price on, for example, or even if you were to buy it on Amazon Prime, a lot of times through the game, you find all kinds of stuff that you use in everyday life, except you just don't pay full price for anything. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just remember that thing on the cycling shoes, whether it's mountain biking or road biking, you know, that, that last clasp, when it becomes a ratchet clasp, it's really, you know, it's a lot more, uh, it commands a little bit more money than having three Velcro or hook and loop fasteners. Okay, let's look at the next item. 
This is item number, looks like four maybe. Um, is it item number four? I think it is, okay. So this was found this past weekend. I think this was basically free on top of a $20 bike that I bought. So um, I kind of knew the guy at the sale a little bit. And I, <laughs> I guess it's, I finessed the guy over three years ago into his garage sale each and every year. Uh, the first time I went to his garage sale, he gave me some cool uh, SNES in-box video games. Uh, I sold them to me for a really good deal. Uh, the next year I went to go see him, I bought an incredible amount of cigars from his garage sale for dirt cheap, like nine bucks for like two boxes of cigars that were like really big and really fat. Um, and so I saw him this past weekend and he was like, Hey, what's up, Chris? And, um, you know, I found a bike at his garage sale, which is neat. I might actually, uh, attempt to destroy it on the trails. We'll see what happens. And then, uh, my dogs are barking. Uh, he gave, he just kind of just threw this in cause I expressed some interest in this model. And this is one of those interesting things that, could sell on eBay for pretty good money, but a lot of times does when they when it becomes that like Robotech looking thing or sometimes anime based um, robot models. Um, those are worth looking up, especially if they're in impeccable condition. So if I open this up, this thing is completely unbuilt. We can see that the manual, everything is there, right? Everything outside of the, the actual glue that you need to put this stuff together, everything is here. So this is probably a forty to fifty dollars sale right here. I don't exactly know how I'm going to move this. I'm going to put it on eBay for sure, but I'll probably cross list it uh, also in my antique booth or vintage booth because um, this kind of stuff sells in the vintage booth really well. So even though it's not vintage, it's still you know people like seeing these kind of old toys in there. So it's a pretty neat looking robot. Um, not necessarily. It might not even be old. It's just that whole like Robotech Mech Warrior kind of looking thing sells pretty decent. That's what it looks like when it's fully built. Yeah, pretty awesome. So I thought it was pretty nice. Um, I don't ever pick up models where I can't determine whether it is complete or not. Um, I don't pick up models that are half built. Um, I will pick up models that are fully built, um, but ones that are half built where I can't dis you know, visually discern whether all the pieces are there, I usually pass on those. Um, I definitely look at all the models that have plastic wrapping. Those almost every single time I will look at those, put them on eBay or put them on Amazon FBA. But uh, definitely look into you know reselling models when you are looking for you know profitable items to resell on eBay. So that's definitely one of those things that when I go to a garage sale and I see one, um, you know a lot of times it's something I pass. But every now and then a cool model will come by, and it's gonna be something like this. You know. All right. So let's go to the last find, which is neat because I think this find, if I execute it correctly, probably yield me about ninety bucks in pure profit. So that's pretty neat. What the hell is it? It's this. Now this is a very, very, very long, okay, down coat. Brand Land's End, which is not bad. Land's End's good, L.L. Bean is good. Um, but the long down coats are good. I probably have a solid month to get rid of this thing before, you know, seasons turn and, um, yeah, but if you look at the solds on Land's End, really long women's coats, they're all the way up there from like 100 to 150 bucks in used condition. This is an impeccable condition. It's the brown color, uh, full down jacket, 90% down 10 percent feathers and um yeah it's an awesome awesome condition i spent 24 i believe for this thing and uh the resale i'm gonna be targeting is about 120 bucks or something like that jackets are really one of those things that there's so many ones that you can uh resell on ebay i sold a jacket today for about 200 and uh, i'll just say it's 250 plus that i was into uh like three weeks ago for maybe two weeks ago for like no like 13 dollars so um yeah, I won't say what it is, but I'll put it in the green room later on today. Um, but yeah, jackets are a really good thing. And, you know, every now and then you get a super awesome home run. But a lot of times, if you know what you're doing, you get really good returns on jackets. Now, whether they become down jackets, now you're dealing with, <clears throat> you know, how long is it? Who makes it? What's the fill power of the jacket? Um, brands are a really big deal at that point. And um, functionality, like, you know, there are different levels of down, down jackets. There's consumer grade, expedition grade. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. And so when you focus on jackets, you know, you can find really neat leather ones, leather bomber jackets, goat skin, um, all kinds of really neat things to put on eBay. Definitely should be something that you should uh, be thinking of maybe in your spare time, looking at jackets, what sells in the certain genres, even if you like want to look at jean jackets, for example, or, um, you know, Aztec tribal type jackets, look through those and see what's selling. It'll typically be like a Pendleton or a Wrangler or an old Levi's or something like that. Um, when you deal with down jackets, you're going to probably find a lot of Patagonia, North Face, um, things like that. 
um, expedition grade stuff, really neat things. But jackets are one of those things that they do sell year round, but right now we're still in that season where it's still cold in a lot of parts of America. So anyways, um, that's pretty much it. I wanted to make a quick show before I boxed up this uh, this joystick. I'm gonna head out. So I'm gonna do some mountain biking today, have some fun. But guys, if you are you know wanting to learn more things and what sells on eBay, really important to get this guide. It's the first link down below. It's 100 amazing items to resell. I'm pretty sure a lot of people that are in this feed right now, live watching this show, have this guide, and it's really important to you know go through it, train your mind, especially before peak garage sale season comes and you know, before all these people start donating so much stuff to thrift stores, you're going to definitely want to memorize that guide right there. All right. So that's it. Um, hundred amazing items to resell. Awesome guide. I help create that. And uh, if you want to check out and learn what the green room is, which is a really amazing place where a lot of resellers congregate, we have a site, we have a private Facebook group, go check it out. It's the second link down below. I even have the green room shirt on today. Look at that. But uh, go check that out. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So uh, Alexander Emanuel is saying, this is nice finds for the road to 200. And the road to 200 is me attempting to get to 200 super high quality listings for 2018. And if you do it just right with a 20 or 30% sell through rate, what I want to make on each and every item is a minimum of about 50 bucks pure profit. So some of these are getting really close to qualifying. And you know, some of these, is, it's really hard to pass like cycling shoes that I know are going to sell within a month or two. Um, but for the most part, when I attempt this road to 200 thing or this journey that I'm going on this year that I'm putting a lot of videos on YouTube for, it's it's about making the the sell, reselling on eBay journey worth your time and making it really fun, almost like a game and uh, holding out for the good stuff and uh, dismissing all the $10 profits that you can probably make or $20 profits, all that kind of stuff, just dismissing that kind of stuff and going for the big stuff. And I think that's really where eBay is. Um, it's good. It's got tons of people, a huge market, you know, looking at this stuff. And um, if you find some of that little bit more rare stuff, not so much common stuff, then less competition with other buyers uh, or other sellers. Um, uh, easier to not have returns, right? Because you're selling a little bit more one of a kind things. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I really believe that people, you know, if you really focus on your avenues in your town, whether it be a garage sale or estate sale, thrift stores, swap made some things you can find all right the inventory to put on ebay and do your own road to 200 concept right there are many people that are probably watching this show that have 300 items 500 thousand maybe two thousand items and they're going man like i am just drowning in this business and i'm not making enough not enough sales are going through ebay sucks i don't think that's the case you know i think maybe you need to relook at your business and um you know go back into more things that so and stay out. They don't come back. They don't get returned. And when they sell, they you know one one sale is the equivalent of maybe ten you know five dollar items that you would have sold, or five dollar profit items, right? Go for the big stuff and uh, you know value your time accordingly. But that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to do it with no more than sixteen hours a week on this project. And if everything goes well, should be making about three to five thousand dollars in pure profit every single month. So that is what I'm chasing all of 2018. And I want to take you guys on the journey with me. So if you're new to this channel, and you're watching right now, hit the subscribe button, follow me. And uh, yeah, we'll do it together, right? So anyways, that's pretty much it. When you guys see me live, you know, come support the Bonafide Hustler channel, hit the like button. And it was a quick video today, but I wanted to show you five quick, cool items that you could sell on eBay for some good profit. I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustler video. Take it easy. Goodbye.